What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again. And today we're going to talk about shares, difficulty, and luck for the mining pool you might be currently mining on. So stick around. Welcome back. So before we can really understand anything about the shares or the difficulty of the mining pool and of course the luck when it comes to a pool in general, we really need to understand what's going on with the network. Ideally what we need to understand here is going to be the block reward and the average time to find a block for that particular cryptocurrency. So as opposed to going ahead and looking at the pool itself, before we do that, we need to look at the network for that coin first. For example, if we take a look at MusicCoin, you have a payout or an average block time of 15 seconds. Now, every 15 seconds, the block reward is 300 coins. On average, you're basically going to get about 300 coins paid out across the network every 15 seconds to some mining pool that is on that network. Now, what changes and increases the network difficulty, not the mining pool difficulty, and those are, that's a distinction you guys need to keep in mind when looking at this, is purely going to be based on amount of hash power aimed at that coin. If the network hash rate doubles, the one remaining constant is going to be the average block time. So this is what they refer to with difficulty. If you have twice the amount of people mining with twice the amount of hash power, then your difficulty is essentially going to double, and that's to basically put it as simply as possible. So in this case, you're basically going to now be getting where you would get before, for example, 300 coins every 15 seconds. You may only get 150 coins every 15 seconds. That's a really rough estimate and obviously no mathematical equations were done here. But to give you an idea, that's essentially the thought on it. The network difficulty is purely based on the amount of people that are mining it provided no other constant variables have changed. And typically when you're talking about a coin or a cryptocurrency, you're not going to see the block reward change or of course the average block time change very significantly unless there's something planned like a fork. For example, with Vertcoin where they had the halving which cut the block reward in half. So now that we understand that, let's talk about what a mining pool is doing. A mining pool is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's pooling a whole bunch of mining resources and pointing it at a cryptocurrency. So essentially what happens is that everybody works together to solve a block to then receive the block reward. So in this case, if we stick with the idea of MusicCoin with a 300 block reward, which I know it's not exactly that, but we're gonna keep it a nice round even number here, then every time a mining pool finds a block, it must then split the block reward of 300 amongst all of the miners that were going ahead and contributing to finding that block. Now this is where we start talking about shares. And essentially shares are worth nothing. The network doesn't really care about the amount of shares you have. But shares are there to determine how much you're going to be paid out for the relative amount of work that you've contributed to the pool itself. So in the case of MusicCoin, let's go ahead and say you submitted 10% of the shares on the entire mining pool and it found a block. In this case, you would receive 30 coins out of the 300 that would then get paid out to you directly. Now you also have to keep in mind that there are network transaction fees that will be taken out of this, albeit not really that high of a cost. Now this is also a certain type of mining pool. This would be a proportional pool. Now proportional, while being one of the more common types, there are a lot of other types of share splitting around mining pools. One of course is gonna be PPLNS, which is pay per last end shares. And that's gonna calculate and that attempts to go ahead and prevent pool hopping. So somebody doesn't come in, grab a whole bunch of the shares, hop to another pool and still get the payout. Now another option is PPS, which is pay per share. And this is where the mining pool has gone ahead and set up a kind of reserve of coins of that particular cryptocurrency and then pays it out to the miners just based on purely on the cost of each share. Now that's really dangerous for mining pool operators and we personally don't do it because 
in that case we could get really unlucky and here's where we start talking about difficulty and luck and to start things off let's talk about difficulty now difficulty on the mining pool just has to be less than the network difficulty and for you as a miner what you want to be paying attention to is the amount of shares you're able to submit. So difficulty on the pool is gonna be important to you if there's an option to increase or decrease difficulty, and you'll wanna pay attention to it for two reasons that you might receive rejected shares. The first reason is going to be that you are not submitting shares fast enough. So what this would mean for you in principle is that you need to decrease the difficulty of the pool you are mining on. The second part is if you are submitting shares too fast and the pool can't process them. In this case you need to increase difficulty or find a mining pool that has more difficulty. Now if you guys aren't aware of what miners are and workers are, miners are just basically the wallet address you're using while workers are the workers that are working towards that wallet address. Keeping this separate is very important because you can have the same miner and yet have a different worker on different difficulties. So let's say you have a rig with a hundred mega hash and you have another rig with 300 mega hash. You don't want to put both of these rigs theoretically on the same difficulty in that pool because one's not going to be working at peak proficiency. Make sure you monitor essentially rejected shares and then place it somewhere where you're receiving the most amount of accepted shares without going too difficult or too easy on your pool difficulty settings. Now some pools will have variable difficulty and the problem with variable difficulty is that it's very hard to predict or to estimate or calculate your shares if at least over the short term. So if you connect initially to a variable difficult pool, you're going to have some issues calculating out what you're actually receiving because the pool is going to be trying to determine what the best difficulty for your miner is. So in the very short term, it's gonna be hard to calculate anything out. However, it is nice for a lot of miners because it's a set it and forget it, provided the pool's not making any sort of miscalculations and placing your miner in an improper difficulty. Okay, great blind run. You've explained to me how I get paid out and that it's based on shares and that there's a lot of things I need to study, including the payout type and differences between proportional, pay per last share, pay per share, etc but why are my calculations still not being accurate here and why am i getting paid out not as much as i think i should or more than i think i should no matter what when it comes to mining there is a certain amount of unpredictability and a certain amount of what is known as luck now on a lot of pools if they have the proper front end apis that you can pull you can actually go ahead and take a look at this if you hop on over to our sumo coin pool for example you'll see a column that has share slash diff and this is basically going to give you a percentage number so a perfectly efficient pool is going to be at 100 percent anything below 100 percent is more efficient and everything above 100% is less efficient. So let's say the current pool prediction is finding a block every two hours. Well, if the last block wasn't found for four hours, then the proficiency here is going to be 200%. However, if the pool found a block in the last hour, then this number will drop to 50%. And so what you're looking for here, if you're having a run of good luck, is that you'll have a whole bunch of numbers below 100%. However, if you're looking at this and you have a whole bunch of numbers above 100%, then you're having bad luck. And that is the very basic way to describe exactly what's going on there. There's actually not much pool ops can do other than go ahead and make sure that the miners are working within their best difficulty range and that they keep up with the network hash rate. And here's where we really get into P to pool or peer to pools. So if you have a peer to pool for something like vertcoin at vert.sonofattack.com, it gets even more complicated. Essentially what this is, is we are a smaller pool that then submits to a larger pool as a single miner, 
the thing goes to try to find blocks on the network. So in this case, you're going to have basically two middlemen taking cuts as well as going ahead and dispersing out shares multiple times. So I hope this brain dump was good enough for y'all. I did it all off the top of my head and we will try to go over specifics and individual topics in later videos. This is more of, like I said, a brain dump to cover everything at once. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to hit the like, comment and subscribe down below and I will see you next Tuesday. Dear Lord, that is really hard to do.